Ames Department Stores was a chain of discount stores that opened in 1958 and closed in 2002. Thank you for your suggestions. Here. She rubs elbows with more famous names than Robin Leach because Ames has thousands of name brand products, all discount priced. Like fashionable P.S. Catano jeans for ladies. Choose from 100% cotton stone wash, acid wash, or basic style. Now just $14.99. So for the big names. I say I've never seen so many famous names. Robin Leach? Come to Ames. Ames. We grew up with better values. The company was founded in 1958 with a store in Southbridge, Massachusetts. Two brothers, Milton and Irving Gilman, opened a general store in the Old Mill in Southbridge, Massachusetts. The Gilmans took the name of their store from the name of its site's old tenant, the Ames Worstead Textile Company. In starting out their business, the Gilmans sought to fill a niche in the retail industry that had previously been ignored. They did so by opening a discount store in a rural area where there were no other large competing stores around. When this formula proved profitable, the Ames Company was incorporated in 1962. Many of the first stores were converted industrial sites, such as the first store in a former textile mill. Ames exploited the availability of cheap real estate in this manner in the first decades of the company, later moving to custom-built store facilities that provided standardized planning and marketing. Ames stock was added to the American Stock Exchange in May of 1967. The company later started trading on the New York Stock Exchange in November of 1972. Ames expanded steadily, concentrating its growth in the Northeast. In January of 1972, 14 years after its founding, Ames made its first major acquisitions, the Joseph Levitt Corporation and the K&R Warehouse Corporation. Six years later, the company continued its expansion through acquisition when it purchased the Davis Wholesale Company for $1 million, bringing 13 W.T. Grant general stores into the company fold. The purchase of Neisner Brothers, Inc. followed 10 months later for $38 million. Neisner Brothers, which was in Chapter 11 bankruptcy and reorganization, operated 32 stores in New York and Florida. Their acquisition brought the number of stores Ames had acquired during the 1970s to 47. In each of its acquisitions, Ames bought a struggling company, then worked to turn around its operations. In this endeavor, Ames proved largely successful. The company brought in merchandise made by well-known manufacturers and sold it in bright, well-organized settings. Prices were kept low all the time, rather than being set high and then reduced for periodic sales. For advertising, the company relied on direct mail campaigns sent to carefully selected shoppers who lived near the Ames stores. In some cases, this formula succeeded in raising sales by as much as 50%. By 1981, Ames was operating 115 discount stores in a chain that ran from Maine to Maryland. In addition, the company ran 20 variety stores, most of which were located in Florida. All of the company's retail properties were located in small towns or near highways that were easily reached by people living in the surrounding areas. Ames had stuck to its original rural orientation, avoiding heavily industrialized areas and places where one company employed almost all of the inhabitants. Ames returned to its policy of growth through acquisition in 1984 when it bought KDT Industries Inc. for $28.5 million. Like past Ames purchases, this company was an organization in distress. Some of its properties had been sold to pay creditors, leaving 42 King's department stores and $98 million in tax credits. Reassured by these positive results, the company made a riskier purchase the next year, paying $196.5 million in April of 1985 for the GC Murphy Company, a discount department store chain based in Pennsylvania. 
With this move, the company doubled its sales to $1.7 billion and in one stroke became a powerhouse in retailing. This expansion came at a price, however, as Ames' debt grew temporarily to 80% of the company's worth. By purchasing Murphy, Ames moved its operations into 14 additional states. Ames agreed to make its largest and most ambitious purchase to date, pledging $800 million to acquire the discount stores division of the Zare Corporation. With this move, Ames doubled its number of stores for a second time in three years to become the third largest U.S. discount store operator. The newly combined companies estimated sales of $5.4 billion in their 736 total stores. For its money, Ames got 392 stores located in the Northeast, the South, and the Great Lakes states. While Ames already operated in many of these areas, its stores were primarily located in rural areas while Zare's strength was in the urban zones. In 1989, Ames closed 77 discount department stores, 74 of which were Zare stores that had been racking up annual losses of $20 million. To further streamline itself and sharpen its focus on its largest and most recent purchase, Ames sold off its G.C. Murphy properties in August of 1989 to E2 Holdings for $77.6 million. Zare had its own history as one of the oldest and best known U.S. retail chains. In deference to this heritage and to the brand loyalty of many Zare Urban customers, Ames announced in February of 1989 that the company would not change the names of 61 profitable inner-city Zare stores. Eight months later, however, on October 26, 1989, it did reopen 254 old Zare stores as refurbished Ames stores. By late April 1990, Ames was staggering from continued poor sales as its Zare operations, as well as the debt burden brought on by the large purchase and costs of converting stores. Manufacturers were refusing to ship the company merchandise, and bankers were refusing to lend it more money. Finally, on April 25, 1990, Ames was forced to file for bankruptcy, seeking protection from its creditors in Chapter 11 reorganization. Among the first steps taken by Ames in this predicament was closing of an additional 221 stores, a reduction of one-third of its store base. In doing so, the company let 18,000 employees go. Most of the stores were located in the Midwest and the South. In 1992, Ames emerged out of bankruptcy operating 309 stores in 14 states, a drastic reduction from its peak of 678 stores. It was also during this time that Ames changed its logo, trading in its traditional red and white colors for the green color present in Zare stores. This eventually became an identifying mark of most Ames stores. In November of 1998, the company agreed to acquire Hills Stores Company, a struggling 155-unit discount chain based in Canton, Massachusetts. The total cost of the acquisition, which was consummated in March of 1999, was about $330 million. In April of 1999, Ames gained additional units through the $40 million purchase from Caldor Corporation of seven stores in Connecticut and one in Massachusetts. Caldor was a discount chain being liquidated under Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The Caldor stores were converted to Ames format later in 1999. By June of 2002, Ames was down to 327 stores, about half of what it had in 1998. On August 14, 2002, Ames executives announced they would close the remaining 327 stores in the chain and wind down business, converting the Chapter 11 bankruptcy reorganization to a Chapter 7 bankruptcy liquidation. 
Continued softness in sales combined with tightening terms and slower shipments from our suppliers have reduced our funds availability below critical levels. Tonight to the closing of AIM stores across the country. If you're a discount shopper, you have lost yet another option. But as Action News reporter Emily Ryan shows us, many people blame it on having too many choices. As they leave with carts full of deals, many shoppers at this Ames and Robinson Town Center still can't believe it's closing. I thought they were doing good. Usually I come in, you gotta wait a while. Ames isn't the only store going out of business here. So is Farmore. Nearby, a Kmart Supercenter remains open, although other Kmarts have closed. That's all we went to is Ames and Kmart. But now we're seeing so many of these other companies that's springing up with, that had the same products and it's so much competition today. This Duquesne University business professor agrees, saying the market is oversaturated. With all this tremendous number of stores, what ends up happening is the weaker, the less financially strong, the older stores tend to die away. And that's what's happening with Ames. You don't have to look far from this Ames to find the competition. Walmart, Target, Sam's Club, and Costco, all luring away customers. I'll go where I have to go to get what I need, I guess. We as Pittsburghers shouldn't panic. It is a national trend. And I think we're going to get down to keeping the stronger, more financially viable, the stores that offer us better prices and better merchandise. In Robinson Township, Emily Ryan, Channel 4 Action News. After the emergence from the first Chapter 11, buying the Hills department stores essentially became its demise. Having made barely enough to make a profit, purchasing the Hills stores put the company's debt-to-income ratio at an all-time high. With no other options and creditors pulling out of contracts due to failure to pay, corporate made the decision to file for a second and final bankruptcy. In December of 2022, Molyneux Group, which owns the assets of Bradley's Department Stores, PLC, announced that Ames Department Stores would be returning after 21 years, with new locations opening in 2023. A web page that appeared to be tied to the Ames Department Store chain also referenced a spring 2023 return and that more will be announced in the coming months, relating to locations and opening dates. When the announcement was made, those full of hope and nostalgia were looking forward to a name's return. However, many became skeptical as time went on. A local TV station, WJR10, began investigating the claims and stated that they were unable to get in contact with anyone from the Molyneux Group, and doubts that they were actually restarting Ames began to surface. It is now spring 2023, or almost done with it at least, with no signs that Ames is making a return. What is even more concerning is that just days ago, the website, aimsstores.com, was no longer in operation. The department store's LinkedIn page was still exists, stating a return in spring 2023. The Molyneux Group website link on their LinkedIn page is also no longer active. Biloxi, Mississippi-based Molyneux Group, a commercial real estate firm, has issued a press release stating that they have no affiliation with the Ames department stores. So for those still holding out hope that Ames will return, it can't hurt, and who knows, maybe their retailer will be resurrected once again. But for now, the prospects aren't looking good. So what do you remember about this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. And if you haven't already, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.